I, I just want to have fun tonight, right? I mean, this, so don't, don't take anything very seriously. Please don't get pissed off me if I offend you. I really couldn't give a shit. If you do, but it's sort of like you have to have that disclaimer up front in case there's Americans here and stuff like that. So the, um, if I don't offend you, I'm sorry too, I will try and get to all of you in time, but we've only got about an hour. I think business is, should be real fun, right? Otherwise, what's the point? All this work-life balance is a total crock. Work-life balance? Mm. That means you have to balance it and compromise and be average all the time. I can't stand all that. I'm a huge believer in work-life integration, right? Live your best life every day. So bring your work, your family, your friends, your sport, the whole thing together to the extent that you can. Because you can. And you must. And you should. Otherwise, you'll be average all the time and all balanced, right? And you just got to avoid moderation. Am I popping very badly? Yeah, so how do I stop that? How's that? Yeah, sorry about that. And uh, you got to avoid moderation because nothing succeeds like excess. So we've got to get some fun, some joy into this whole prop prospect. I was just talking to the Spark people and they said that they were very excited about being world class. <laughs> I think being world class is so dreadful. Who wants to be world class? That means you're the same as Australians or something. We got, come and do it for me Richard, I don't know how to do this. I'm used to working with top blade equipment. What's that about workmen always blaming their tools and stuff? Should I move my mouth differently? How's that? What? Yeah, should I do that? I'll do that. The, um, so what was I talking about? Can anybody remember? Dave, what do you think I was talking about? Americans. Being well, oh, Americans. Oh, God, let me get onto Americans. That's, actually, I'm going to get onto Americans right now, Calvin, right? So this world class stuff is just. Nonsense. So if you are truly entrepreneurs, right? Who hands up the entrepreneurs? Oh, that's kind of positive. That's good. Well, being world class is hopeless because that just means you're the same as all the other bozos. You've got to be world changing. That's got to be the goal of startups today because we don't need any more world class companies. We've got too many of them, all right? They're all just a waste of space. We've got to be world changing. And to be world changing, you need just two things. The first thing you need now is a real good idea. You don't need a great idea. There are very few great ideas, but you need a pretty good one because we live in the age of the idea. Ideas are the currency of the future, the currency of today, the currency of the now. It is not about process, it is not about management, it is not about quality. It's not about all the strategy and all this stuff. These are all table stakes, okay? You've got to be a well-managed company, otherwise you're going to go out of business in 10 seconds. But being well-managed will not take you to world-changing glory. Ask Robbie Deans. What will take you to world-changing glory is having a pretty good idea and then adding unbelievable executional skills. In the world that we live in, execution is the killer app, not strategy. We've lived in a world where strategy, 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 there are strategy teachers all over the place, countless books on strategy, and they all look just the same. A few weeks ago, um, a couple of the guys here were at Stanford with me earlier this week, and I told them an American story. Um, which makes this point. I was in my office in New York and my assistant Trudy came in and said to me, uh, I have the Pentagon on the phone. I didn't really know much about the Pentagon. I said, look, probably not. I've not done anything wrong. Uh, 
No, I, no. She said, oh, no, it's the Pentagon. I said, no, no, it's just sort of a warped sense of New Zealand humor. It will be one of my idiot New Zealand friends. Knowing you are a gullible American, <laughs> actually don't need to put the two words together, but knowing you are, <laughs> and they'll be saying they're the Pentagon. She said, it's the Pentagon. I'm in trouble here. It's the Pentagon. I said, how do you know? She said, you'll know. <laughs> I knew. As I took the call, I stood to attention. It was the first time in my life I have ever spoken to a three-star United States of America general. Actually, I didn't speak to him. I listened <laughs> to him. I have learned one thing. That, first of all, there's not that many sort of bona fide three-star American generals. And they don't have like conversations like us because conversations usually are sort of two-way things. No, this is a one-way thing. It uh, starts with an action verb and he ends up with you doing something <laughs> that he told you to do. That's how it works. And it seems to be a fairly standard system in the military in America. And uh, I understood sort of through this, I'm not going to call it a conversation, diatribe, that I was to report to the Pentagon, wherever that was, because I wasn't really sure where it was. I thought it was a band of the Pentagon, but no, it's a place. And I had to report there quite shortly and talk to them about how to improve the image of America internationally. So I said to this general, um, how long have I got? <laughs> Three hours. I said, well, it, might take long, you know, it might take longer than that. It, it's a Three hours. And uh, who will I be talking to? Our best and brightest. Poof. It didn't help me, so I... Call him back. I said, no, I didn't get that properly. Who did you say I would be talking to? Our best and brightest. It'll be a small room. There. <laughs> <laughs> so, and anyway, I rock up to the Pentagon. You all know it's in Washington because you're all educated and that. I had no idea where it was. And I was met at Washington train station by six... United States Marines. Yeah, I can see you're excited by that thought. And they, <laughs> and I understand that excitement because they were in the full uniform, big guns, the whole thing, right? I know it's a fantasy of yours. It's, <laughs> it didn't do anything for me, didn't do anything for me. And one of these furrowed, browed, big, you know, guys says to me, Mm. So like that, grunt. And I said, listen, what's the matter? Why are you giving me all this death stare? He said, because you represent a threat. <laughs> like, fuck, I mean, <laughs> there's six of them, they got guns, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I said, what do you mean? He said, you are from a foreign power. I thought, oh, fuck, <laughs> New Zealand. Although I thought, no, maybe England, I don't know. <laughs> so, so I said, no, I'm not. He said, you are from a foreign power, sir. When they say sir like that, they don't mean it, right? It, it mean, no. And I said, no, no, I'm from New Zealand. He said, where is that? <laughs> Fuck. I said, it's near Australia, I have kangaroos and that, you know? Mm. So he took me into this room, and I walk into this room, and it's like this, except there's... 200 people there, best and brightest, right? It's sort of modest, 200 people. And, 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 and it isn't like this at all. Nobody's laughing, right? Everybody's all hiding behind initials. You have the NSA, the FBI, the CIA. FBI is all over here. CIA right over there because they don't, they don't talk to each other. And Homeland Security is right in the middle because they've got all the power now, right? Now that it's too late, they've already blown up the towers and all that shit. So it's Homeland Security now. 
are all sort of on top of everything, right? So they're all in the middle. And you wa I walked into this room, I was kind of intimidating because the Marines stayed, which I didn't think was a good sign. I, I would have preferred it if they would have gone, but they stayed there. And uh, they didn't look very sort of friendly. Anyway, so they sat. And I noticed that everybody in this room, the guys, they all looked like those guys that when you walk into a pub and you see three or four of them there, you go, oh, shit, I've forgotten my... And you walk straight out because they're the kids you've avoided for years and years at uni, at the rugby club, in the pub, and there's a hundred of them there, all looking at their Apple equipment. And they have iPad 1, 2, they have iPad 4. It's not even invented yet. And they've got it. And all the girls, they're all size zero. <laughs> yeah, they have never been near a McDonald's, right? <laughs> and they're all just like eating grass and drinking bottled water constantly, right? It's horrible. We're right? green shit all over the place. Anyway, so it's all a bit forbidding. There is a point to this. <laughs> if, <laughs> if only I could remember what it was. Anyway, the... Uh, the point of this, so we go, we start, and I say, listen, okay, you're all looking at me all sort of like this, you know, but I'm here to talk to you about how to improve the image of America internationally, but don't worry. You don't have an image problem. And so everybody relaxes, not, you know, they relax. You don't have an image problem. But, hmm. There is another, just a small, small thing that you should think about. You don't have an image problem, but you do have a sort of an action problem. <laughs> you should stop assassinating people. <laughs> well, fuck, nobody laughed. <laughs> Nothing. Silence. Silence. It was dreadful, and it got worse, right? Because then I sort of explained that, you know, they should sort of reduce their military spending by half and bring back the Peace Corps and stop invading places. And that. Anyway, so it went all really bad. And <laughs> halfway through that, we we're now going to segue back into the point. They said, uh, listen, you, where are you from? New Zealand. Well, wherever that is, you don't understand anything about this world we live in. Whereas we, in the United States of America, we understand everything. And I thought, shit, right, that's Obama's foreign policy right there. One line, that's it, we got it. And I said, what do you mean by that? And the guy said, the reason, he didn't use the word assassination, right, because they've been trained not to use that. The reason we target tactically, <laughs> if I target tactically, what's that? You, you kill people, right? You target hospitals and things and kids and that. Target tactically, yeah. We target tactically is because, da -da, we live in a VUCA world. VUCA world. I thought a VUCA was a bad thing you had on your foot, you know, where you got it in changing rooms and that. So I said, well, what's that? So this flash little nerd says to me, well, we live in a world that is volatile, that is uncertain that is complex, and that is ambiguous. And in this world, therefore, there is no role anymore for strategy and for big resources and for big scale invasions. I said, well, shit, that's good. That's progress. Excellent. So we have to, you know, target tactically because this world is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And I was a bit pissed off with him by then, right? And I said, well, listen, we know that in New Zealand, wherever that is. We know all that. There's no news in this. I said, and you guys are, are harboring under a reality. Yes, this is the world. It's the only world we know in New Zealand. It's the only world we've ever known. And it is the only world that there will ever be from now on because everything's changing so fast. So we get it. But in fact, you guys missed the point. We, actually, in New Zealand, believe we live in a super VUCA world. <laughs> you fuck. 
I'm in advertising, right? So everything's super. <laughs> super model, super league, super rugby, super size, super VUCA. And I'm rapidly thinking, right, what begins with V and U <laughs> and A. And I go, so yes, yeah, so we live in a world that is volatile, full of life, full of vibrancy, full of entrepreneurs, full of startups, full of hope, dreams, and all this stuff. We live in a world where everything is vibrant and lively and can happen. We live in a world that's unreal. It is unreal. In the past, Many of your businesses didn't have a prayer and didn't have a chance because you didn't have scale, you didn't have resource, you didn't have time, you didn't have expertise, you didn't have connections. Those days are gone. You don't need any of those things. All you need is an idea. One piece of Apple equipment and YouTube. And that's it, baby. The world will come knocking on your door immediately, overnight. It is unreal what you can achieve now through the power of the idea, through the power of the unreasonable power of creativity. And that lives in all of us because we live on the edge. And all development will come from the edge, just as it does in biology. Nothing anymore comes through the middle. It's too hard to get through the middle. You tell me any sporting team that attacks through the middle. We attack through the edge. I mean, what happens in the middle? Look what's happening to Europe. Nothing's happened in France in 1775. <laughs> Switzerland, cuckoo clocks, chocolate, and Roger Federer. I mean, it's not, it's not like a hybrid and hotbed of creativity, is it? But we're going to have to be like that, right? You just watch Izzy Dag play on Saturday, and that's what I'm talking about. From the edge, kick it to us, because we're, we're going to change everything, man. Right? So we live in a world that is crazy. George Bernard Shaw said all progress will come from the unreasonable man. He meant women too, but all progress will come from the unreasonable man. All progress in our super worker world will come from crazies. Now Ian will tell you, I am seriously fucking crazy. I'm scared of nothing, no one. I am rich, I've been poor, being rich is better. Powerful, famous, I don't give a shit. I am so crazy. And I was crazy when I was none of those things. And only the crazies will win. Because only the crazies dare to break the rules, rewrite the rules, only the crazies dare to go in places no one else will go. Only the crazies will hammer the abominable no man who lurks everywhere in the banks, in businesses, in government. Hands up the crazies. Matthew, don't sit there. Show us your craziness. No, better not. No, you're not sure yet? No, that's crazy. You're crazy. And we live in a world that's astounding. It's astounding because things happen here at the speed of light. You no longer need time. You no longer need money. Things change like this. Ask, you know, Russia, you know, I mean, Putin and Medvedev are sitting on an Arab Spring. Okay, what can change in China overnight? It really can. You know what can happen when something hits the Internet. Just one tweet, man. You're one tweet away from glory or a problem. It is astounding the pace of change. Absolutely astounding. And so everything is in our favor, I think, in this world. Why I like speaking to entrepreneurs and not to corporates is that corporates send me to sleep. Because they're all about the reasons why it won't work, it's not invented here, why we have to incrementally grow. We have to, the theory of last year, we want to grow by 3%. They budget, for God's sake. Who cares about budgets in this world? How can you budget in a super VUCA world? They plan. They have annual plans. What are they talking about? Who on earth can write an annual plan? It's a lot of nonsense. 100-day plans. Give yourself a 100-day plan. 100 days, do 10 things. Boof, nail them. Then give yourself another one. Boof, nail them. Then give yourself another one. Boof, nail them. You know? You win championships in soccer by this Saturday. 
Or if you're Manchester United, maybe you don't ever win again. Lovely. <laughs> and Manchester City, the true blues, will go to glory. So it's an astounding world, and everything can become fun. Wake up and get the best car insurance on the market. Cooperativa.